Hello and welcome to another episode of The Open Road, a podcast in which we discuss all manner of topics around open source community. My name is Rich Bowen. And my name is Brian Proppett. I'm happy to have you along on this continuing journey around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And today's topic, we're going to address um, uh, one of the areas that seems to be the biggest part of the pushback against DEI efforts in open source. And that is the concept of meritocracy. The idea is that if everybody pretty much does the best that they can in the talent area that they are good at, then you don't necessarily need to worry about diversity, equity, and inclusion because you know everybody's just judged on their merits alone. That is, you know, for all intents and purposes, the 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 root thesis that people use to push back against uh, concentrated DEI efforts in some open source communities. So, uh, with the uptick of of focus on diversity and inclusion and equity over the last five or ten years, um, there are a lot of differing opinions about whether meritocracy is a real thing, whether it works, whether it does in fact give you sufficiently diverse communities. All of these are questions that we asked our guests about. Uh, we're going to start talking with Griselda Cuevos, who uh, is on the DEI team at, at Google. I, I, what is her title? She is the product manager of Google Account Security, yeah, but she, she, she been worked involved. with DEI at, at Apache for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the context in which I met her. So here's what she had to say when we brought up these questions with her. I think merit is a very subjective mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. way of deci deciding who you are or how you are included. Let's go back to the inclusion part of diversity and inclusion. Merit needs to be decided by a template, by a belief by some specifications or considerations and merit is everywhere right like you go to a job interview and you are evaluated with a rubric and some attributes and also with your work experience and a lot of companies have worked towards re removing these biases from from the way you onboard people right because at the end of the day it's onboarding through merit um so the question here is like, who is deciding what is your merit mm -hmm. to join a community? And why don't we look at other things like, what is the impact that a new idea or a new contribution is having, right? Um, what is the likelihood of this idea uh, happening? What is the ROI of this idea, right? It's like maybe looking at other components that people can debate with me that all of those are part of merit, but are we really considering all of this uh, part of the merit uh, part? I think they could be some metrics, but is people really thinking like, okay, let me, let me measure the ROI of this new change in the page, and then I'm gonna decide if you uh, have the merit. I think like in the day to day, you tend to be more about how present you are, how many conversations you've had in the community, how often have you engaged? Are, are things that you can decide in a blink of an eye instead of like really looking towards the real impact of your contributions? So that said, uh, merit, sure. Uh, how do you define me merit? I think that's what decides whether it's the, the right decision to, or the right um, rubric to include people and welcome people in your community. So I, I find myself, um agreeing with the premise here that, that Grizz is saying that the problem with merit is that it is completely subjective and more importantly that you have to take into consideration who is determining merit because the mm -hmm. the person or people who determine merit determine the character of your community and so we have a tendency because we are social animals to select people like ourselves. Mm -hmm. And 
what I what I found interesting about her about her answer that I haven't really heard articulated before is that we should evaluate based on impact instead, and that's a great idea, but hard to implement. How do you how do you actually measure the impact of a change? And that's a fascinating idea to me because you know there's there's obviously experts out there who have focused on this sort of measurement and and know something I don't. And I, I I'd love to I'd love to hear more about the notion of evaluating contributions in terms of impact. Yeah. I, I and and I I would love to hear more expounded on that as well. I, I I did catch that, you know, one of the things she did say along those lines was that a community needs to kind of preemptively set up, you know, what's going to be measured as far as impact. And that's when she was referring to, you know, let's set up the rubrics in the first place that will help you easily, you know, make those uh, measurements happen. Um, and and it will be, you know, to, to do that around impact mm -hmm. is obviously going to be much um, less I, I get I, I, it'll be much less um, subjective um, yeah. as you move through and and, and, and you kind of get away from that whole, you know, let's work with people who think of like us um, or look like us or have the same educational background as us. This is yeah. part of the problem that we have with any community is, as you said, we tend to glom um, around people that have some more characteristics. I think that would require that a, a project, that a community have a really clear, not just an internal, we know what we're about, but a, a really well articulated vision of, of what the project values, what, what it considers to be its ideals. And that's, you know, that's hard for a bunch of software developers to, to come up with. And that's, uh, I mean, it's challenging for any community that has grown organically to sit back and say, okay, what is it that we really value about ourselves as a community so that we can go find people that might not be like us biologically, might not be like us politically, but are like us in terms of what this community values. Right. Well, and, and the other thing, and Griselda didn't say this, but the other thing that I've often found that needs to be added to this mix beyond, okay, what do we measure and, and, and how do we get those results and things like that? That is all great. But the other half of that also needs to be, how do you express appreciation for value? Um, because one of the things that I do in my current job is, are there paths to being recognized? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For what you have. So like if nobody has a chance to like say be a maintainer yeah. um, on a project, let's just pull that example out, then it you know, either and when I say no chance, it's like nobody's written down, okay, what do you have to do to become a maintainer? Who do you have to talk to? What steps are required? You know, even simple things like that because again as you said not all software developers are thinking about this they might just be thinking about i just need to make the project better they're not and and they're not being malicious about it they're just not thinking about okay well how do i help others you know advance yeah um, with this so at, at apache we have this notion of community being more important than code mm -hmm. and and it it can be so in the context of what you just said, it can be sort of a thing that we say that we don't mean because when we try to improve just the code, when we're focusing on just making the software better, we tend to not be thinking about making the community better. And, and having, having a, a coding standard mm -hmm. is awesome, but having that path to maintainership, having that documented, here's what you need to do to become a leader in this community. I see that so infrequently. And you see it, it it uh, it it gives contributors hope, right? You know, when they come to a project and they think, well, this is awesome, but there's no chance that I'll ever be a maintainer. But if you show them these are the steps, then that mm -hmm. can be really encouraging because it gives them permission to pursue that. 
Exactly. And and that's one of the things that, you know, I'm not a big, you know, who about capitalism, but <laughs> I think that's one of the things that corporations typically, at least on paper, do well. And sure. and obviously they're doing this out of self-interest because there's a lot of money involved when you promote somebody. So they're, you know, they're not trying to make it easy. But they they right. do have to, at least again, on paper, make it fair. Um, and we could argue all day about whether they do that consistently because they they don't, but you know, on paper, they have to make it fair. And people don't seem to apply that though to a volunteer open source project. And and that's kind of that's kind of too bad. And I'm not saying make these huge, ginormous, complicated bureaucratic rules. No, one hopes not. <laughs> no, but there's something to be said for having a, a a path to advancement, Yeah, you know, and, and for whatever you do in the community too, because it's not just about coding. Um, diversity of talent is also uh, a, a big thing to promote as well. So bringing that back around to the question that we asked, mm -hmm. when you tie that to something as nebulous and undefined as merit, where merit is defined by, the whims of the existing contributors that can be very demoralizing mm -hmm. um, both in terms of how do i get from here to there i don't know but also in terms of i can't seem to get there does that mean i am without merit and both of those things are very demoralizing to somebody trying to be effective in a project community right exactly <clears throat> So, so a little bit off topic there. Let's uh <laughs> no, we're this is all on topic for us. Yeah. Um we'll but I was just about to say we could probably move on to our next guest. All right. Um we we toss this question out um to all of them. And our next guest is Demetrius Tinum, who is a senior director of diversity, inclusion, and belonging at GitHub. Um and Demetrius is um, had a lot of insights around this program um, or around this topic, given the programs that she works with, especially the all in program um, that she's doing in conjunction with the Linux Foundation. Um, so we asked this question about how do you address meritocracy and the pushback that it sometimes gives uh, it is it gives to open source projects. And here's what she had to say. Yeah, I, you know, when I hear questions around merit or meritocracy, I always say before we can even get into a conversation about merit, we have to have a larger conversation about the systems and the structures in place that enable a construct called meritocracy to be so problematic in the first place. Whenever someone to me says that they believe that anyone from anywhere can contribute, the smartest ideas should win. They will hire the best person for the job, no matter where they come from or who they are. My automatic response always is, what have you done to ensure that the best ideas are getting to you? The candidates you are seeing before you are indeed the best candidates, that all contributions and voices are being heard so that those ideas even have a chance of winning. Mm -hmm. I want to hear how you are making sure that the systems and structures in place are free from bias, homophobia, sexism, racism, all the other isms. If you can't ensure me that you've done that, then your ideas around merit or meritocracy, they fall apart in my eyes. And I'd be remiss that not to mention that on the flip side of that is that for every argument that I hear for meritocracy, I hear the argument that if we are prioritizing diversity, that we have to make sure we aren't compromising quality. So my ask is that the dedication that someone has around making sure that quality isn't compromised through diversity, Keep that same energy to ensure that quality isn't comp compromised through merit as well. So Demetrius um, kind of, well, did outline a lot of the things that we were saying about putting the proper systems in place and whatnot, and really examining um, examining the systems that you already have in place when you start talking about uh, merit and 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 how that works in your community. I think she really echoed what Griselda said. She's, you know, it was a lot of the same, you know, a lot of the same ideas just expressed in a different way where she, instead of impact, she was talking about quality. Um, 
but to me that's a very similar concept yeah. and if not the same then they they overlap uh, a big deal um and and i was really excited about our answer during the initial interview because i thought you know putting aside you know like start looking at things like quality of of what you're doing and yeah. is pushing meritocracy taking that quality away um which was great so so another thing that i heard um and you know I, i've said this before every time we talk to demetrius i'm i'm impressed with how deeply she's clearly thought through these issues you know she doesn't just they're not just off the cuff answers but um one of the uh one of the the important aspects of this that i heard was yes we should absolutely evaluate what contributions have the most merit but if we don't have diversity first then we're only seeing a small pie slice of the possible contributions that we could be seeing mm -hmm. and so yeah we're picking the ones with the most merit but we're limiting the the total contributions that we could be having and that that is you know even if we just look at this selfishly from the point of view of our project we are limiting the ideas that could be flowing to our project when we don't focus on diversity mm -hmm. and uh that when, when you get into these kinds of arguments in the community it can feel like a bit of a roundabout argument but but it, it's so important you know because if you're if you're limiting your ideas to only the ideas that you already agree with then you are necessarily stifling innovation right well and 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 i think one of the best examples that i've seen where a like-minded culture or a like-minded set of ideas um can really impact how a like and i'll stick with software since you know that's where we're <laughs> we're kind of living right now how it can affect a software project is something like the the ideas that come out of silicon valley um and how those ideas translate to other parts of the world mm -hmm. is not always a uniform thing and, and the classic example for me of this is like delivery apps and i'm not going to pick on any one company but i am talking about you know um doordash and uber eats and things like that and they all they are all fine and in an urban environment which you or, or a, po a population dense environment like yeah. you find around silicon valley certainly in san francisco and other cities in the us and around the world that model works great. Um, everybody's close together, you know, delivery, you know, deliveries are, are fast. Um, they're, they're relatively economical because you can use public transportation or bicycles or other forms of transportation. And again, I'm not here saying, ooh, delivery apps are the great things. I know they have their own problems as well. But while they work great in an urban environment they do not work well in smaller cities That's and right, rural yeah. environments yeah. they they don't um and having lived in a smaller city for a long time as these things were coming out um you know they just they they were expensive drivers were spending more on gas than right, yeah. they they were actually getting in terms of their 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 fees um it, it really did not work well and for me that is a classic example of how you're living in a bubble where yeah food apps are great where i live and they're perfect for where i live but they didn't really think about okay well how do we make this scale to a completely different environment that's a really interesting example because usually the conversation around diversity can, tends to get bogged down in well, bogged down is the wrong term. It tends to get focused entirely on issues of race and gender diversity and ignore the other 90% of the of the picture. Uh, but but when you when you 
make an intentional focus on diversity, it lifts all boats. It helps all underrepresented peoples, not just the ones that you happened to be thinking of at the time. So that that that's a really compelling example to me because I do live in a smaller city and those things don't work here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I, so we, we have to, I, you know, we have to think outside the box and that's an easy thing to say because sometimes we don't even know what the box we're in is. And that's a challenge for everybody. We all make assumptions on other people based how we, how we've experienced yep. life. Yeah. You know, and that's, you know, in these times, that's a problem because we have to really look beyond ourselves and see the world in ways that we might not, you know, have thought of before uh, and understand how people are not doing, you know, super great. Um, and that's the challenge, I think. And it's in the broader sense, is the software that I'm even building worth building because is it solving a problem for everybody or just a few people? So we'll we'll move on to our last guest, um, who is Clarence Clayton. He's a senior manager at Red Hat um, on the global data privacy team. And Clarence um, was forthcoming in his answer as well to, you know, hey, what do we do when meritocracy is used sort of as a shield for DEI? And this is what Clarence had to say. Hmm. Interesting. So the first thing I would say is that equality is not political or it shouldn't be. Uh, it, it's just the right thing to do. Uh, and, and I think that that we would all be better to 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 look at it through that lens instead of of what can make it a little bit more polarizing, if you will. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other thing that I would say is I I appreciate the meritocracy. I appreciate the the best ideas winning and and the that that culture of collaboration. How those the right ideas bubble to the top. What I would question though is if you don't have diversity in the room, if you don't have different experiences and perspectives um, that are contributing to that conversation that are helping to to power that decision making process then is it really a meritocracy so clarence i think makes the best point to end this episode um with you know talking about meritocracy and the challenges it brings which is if you don't have everybody in the room in the first place um then how can you even call it meritocracy yeah it's almost like and this this is a a similar thing to what Demetra said you're you're picking the best ideas out of a shallow pool mm -hmm. rather than than giving yourself you're, you're limiting your own options if you don't have everyone in the room and that's uh that's again it's robbing ourselves it's it's tragic so it really is and and there are so many different ways. I mean, usually people think of diversity, equity, inclusion, um, you know, and they talk about gender or they talk about race or and maybe they might talk about religion. You know, we we don't talk enough about accessibility, um, and we're building we're building tools that depend very much on sight and sound and touch because you know we're probably on a phone or we're probably on a keyboard or something like that and we're using those senses primarily and you know we're ignoring the fact that there are a lot of people that don't have you know those tools as they go through life and you know getting to a, a better place and understanding accessibility is also a big part of how diversity should work um, and it just makes your code that much better so consistently across our speakers, one thing that I that I see is that none of these, none of our guests feel that meritocracy or striving for merit in any capacity is, is a bad thing. It's just a small part of a much larger picture. And, and, and so when people use meritocracy as a reason not to pursue diversity, it, it's almost like these two things are you know, they're parallel tracks and we can do and should do both. 
I yeah, and, and agree. And we're not saying throw away meritocracy um, at all. I do think we do have to examine how meritocracy works for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, because if people are coming from different cultural backgrounds or different educational backgrounds or whatnot, what's good for you might not be good for them. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't necessarily detract from the impact that they can make on your project. Well, once again, we really appreciate our guests and the the insights that they've given us. Um, these uh, these windows into it's always fun to to talk about something we've been talking about for 20 years and get a new insight into it. That's the thing that I enjoy the most about these conversations. So big thank you to them and to you, our listeners, for uh, giving us an excuse to have these conversations. Exactly. So until the next part of our journey on the open road, my name is Brian Prophet. And I'm Rich Bowen. And thank you for joining us on the open road.